Are we live? Oh, so we're doing it this way. Are we? No, you just welcome into another no, episode. No, of the what happened to Sean? Open. What happened to Sean? Oh, I because you botched it. I, said, I didn't. I didn't. I counted you. No, no, I counted you in. No, no, there was a delay. I told you, you hit me I with the delay. You, you got me in a foul mood because you, you're saying, oh, I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? I say, yeah, I'm ready to go, Joe. Sure. Why aren't we ready no, to go? No, you I, said start I'm the ready. show I'm ready to talk Just to some, some whatever. State football. What I said, yeah, start it whatever. And then as soon as I say, oh, I'm ready to go and start, what do I see? I see Joe take off his headphones and start massaging his head for, I, I don't know, 15 seconds my after. my hair. I was fixing my hair, and it's still messed up. How important do you think that is to the product, your um, hair and how it looks? Well, it looks like shit, so I have to. This is okay. This is what was happening. He said, Oh, do that again. He said, Okay, you ready? All right, I'm re- I'll be ready. And then he kept doing that. He kept doing that. Sorry for the, the audio only listeners. That the video obviously is going to be up on YouTube for that. So if you want to see that example, just go to the YouTube page and then we'll be able to get that going. But Joe is so yes. un- he's so productive for like 30 minutes. When we're really getting ready, we're talking. Oh, about I, I, I have a short it, attention span. I can't so, do more than 30 minutes. Sometimes. He's so productive then. And then as soon as we're ready to go, he becomes a toddler that saw the shiny spoon under the couch. And he just said, eh, okay, that's going to, that's going to, that's, <laughs> this is my new thing. This is what I'm going to focus on. Instead of, uh, I don't know, having a partner that when it's time to go for me. I'm ready to go. I'm getting my thoughts straight. I'm thinking, all right, how am I going to open the show? Try to, try to be a little it's entertaining empty, for the listeners. Empty and I'm seeing this. Joe just want to open up the show the same way. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the FCS Football Podcast. I have I'm Jody Alone, joined by college teammate and roommate Sean Anderson. And we're going to talk about the FCS Football Championship game today. But we're going to do it a little different. We're going to go one game or one team today and then one oh, team tomorrow. Sorry, pardon me for trying to have some thoughts on how to open okay. the show in a lively manner. I open it with a plenty lively manner. And for anyone who stumbled upon this video and was thinking, oh, I'm sure this is a great 20 minute breakdown, North Dakota State. And you're like, what the hell is this two minutes of arguing? Uh, This is literally every other video that we do. So thank you for suffering through with us. We already did Montana State. Go back and watch the Montana State one if you haven't already. Or listen. Keep watching this one. Now watch it. I don't care what you do. Um, Now we're going to do North Dakota State. We're going to talk about the Bison, who are the higher seeded team. Frankly, in my opinion, are the better team. Okay, in this thank you, thank you for the saying that because I was about to blow your team, spot up. I was about more to blow your spot up in this matchup. And Sean, we were talking, looking at the stats before we 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 got rolling, and we, we were kind of in awe of some of the numbers that we we were were pulling. And this is a team that's played a lot of good teams. They have one loss, and that was to South Dakota State um, in a hostile environment in Brookings. That one was hostile, all right. But the two things that, yeah, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of helmet banging uh, in the stands. I'm not even that. Okay. Oh, you're talking about the vomit? <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll talk about that. Okay. Um, oh, I know it's what just, you're talking just, about. I remember things at times that I, I didn't that day. And I say, oh, how about that? <laughs> this team, though, the two stats that really stood out, Sean, were the fact that this team is only allowed in – the 14 or 15 games they've played, they've only allowed, you said, around 1,500 rushing yards. And they've also allowed only 11 points per game. Wait, I want to see that actually... 11 points a game given up. They've only hey. allowed 82.7 yards per game. Not even 100 yards. Correct. They're currently allowing on the ground. And this is facing off against the team that is prolific at running the football, at the quarterback and at the running back position. Before we start diving into how good this team is at running the football, we got to talk about this defensive identity. Uh, they're also only allowing 177 passing yards per game, which is frankly pretty scary just to even say. But unlike Montana State, Sean, I don't really see a team that is led by one guy or a couple guys with some big stats. I see a complete team that has some dudes that rally to the football. You have a really stout defensive line that is littered with a number of guys. This is a very, very good group, and it's not because of one player. It is because it is a complete and well-rounded team. Now, if this were a complete and well-rounded show, you would have swung it to me for the bet online read, but you decided just to Ah, power on through. Yes. Uh, Well, just keep talking about strengths, and then we'll do the bet online read after. What happened to the... 
Uh, I'm dumb and I don't pay attention to things. So I would rather not cut into the middle of the discussion. You wouldn't want to be read. just you want you wouldn't want to tease Sean's strengths for the game after the bet online read. No, just talk about the strengths and then we'll do we the have bet online. Creative read. differences and it irritates. Don't me. you think that would be ham fisted if we just shoved a read in the middle of a conversation? I already made it ham fisted by announcing right, it during the do the read then. <laughs> You know, like professional radio shows, they just type it to each other. They got like a Google Spaces chat. They just type and they don't bring it up like we do. <laughs> I think it's a lot better when we're very vocal about how we're both idiots. Um, we never lie on this show. I'll tell you what. We never lie. Yeah. Um, one thing that's really impressive about this, the, or a huge strength of this North Dakota State team, is that they have, let me get this total here. One, two, three, four, five, six rushers so far this year that have um, exceeded 350 rushing yards on the year. Mm -hmm. That is a big deal. Normally you don't have like a running back by committee that all is going, you know, normally it's like three guys, maybe a quarterback gets 400 yards and a, a couple touchdowns, six guys over 350 yards throughout a season is a, it's kind of like how the San Francisco 49ers are built where mm -hmm. year after year it's, Oh, who's new guy on the scene. Okay, this is what your read is. This is what you're keying off of on the on the tackles inside hip. This is who you're looking for in the secondary. And you're just going to go for eight yards of carry. And we're, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Elijah Mitchell. It doesn't matter if you're Raheem Mostert. Uh, Tevin Coleman was there. Uh, Jared McKinnon was there. It doesn't matter. It is a team and an offense that is so well constructed that they say, whoever, go ahead. We're all doing the same thing. We're all going to be fine. And we're going to get net positive yardage. Just about every single time in college football, and Joe. How often is that? It's very when rare have, and when you have such a, a structure that you can plug yeah. and play anybody. So, so I would argue the way that this team is almost structured by having so many different guys that can take over a game, they can almost pick what is working and ride the the hot hand. So, if they need speed, they can go to somebody. If they need power, Hunter Lupke, you know for a fact, is that guy. Uh, I don't know if Tamarick Williams is necessarily that speed guy, but he's got he's got a little bit more juice and some he's more got burners. Touchdowns on the year. Yeah, he fast enough he, to get in the end zone. And if you want to get a little creative with putting Quincy Patterson in in that wild Seven cat touchdowns. style, Taysom Hill style role, he's capable of doing that. And then we know Cam Miller is an athletic quarterback as well, who has taken over that starting role. That is a lot to handle. And this team collectively has rushed for 3,831 yards. They're going to finish the season probably over 4,000 rushing yards as a team. That is disgusting. That is, I can't even, I can't even really fathom what you would need to do on a week-to-week -week basis to produce those kinds of results. But this team is producing passing-like statistics for running the football. And that's what makes them ultimately very scary, is that it's not like Montana State where it's Afonze, and when Afonze is not available like he was against South Dakota State, they had to go to Mellet. They had to rely on Mellet. Mellet took over the game. But when either of those guys are not available or they're not, you know, they're bottled up and they're not playing up to the level that they need to, it's easier to slow down a team like that. Right. Dakota State's not like that. They have so many different guys to go to, and they do it so well and so effectively, it is going to be really, really difficult to stop. It's so funny. I was cutting up uh, the Arkansas game uh, this past week, their bowl game against, what was it, Penn State, I think they played? Yeah, it was, it was Penn State. Um, and they they just ran the ball damn near every single play. And their their quarterback, is it K.J. Williams, I think, was his name? Uh, K.J. Or, Jefferson. Jefferson, correct, correct. Um, and they had, like, it, it, with five minutes left in the third quarter, they had or fourth quarter, they had, like, 298 rushing yards in the game. And that's all they did. And they just wore down Penn State, and they wore them down, they wore them down. Whoever the running back, every new running back, new running back, new running back, quarterback run, all that. I'm like, this is kind of North Dakota State like, and this is kind of how they beat you because they're averaging 273 yards a game on the ground. I, what do you do against that? It, this Not a lot. This isn't. This isn't, isn't week five. We we got out the gates hot. No, no, no. This is the last game of the season. This is how we're looking. We're like, how are they getting 300 yards a game just bullying you? And it is astounding it is astounding and maybe it's because we've seen all the the quarterbacks that have come through there and say oh man they just are a quarterback factory you know they're pumping them out mm -hmm. i don't know they've just been like building they've just been building a team that if they didn't have a quarterback they have such a good scheme that they can still dominate games 
I, and what I also don't get helps it. them, right? And what also helps them is that they do have people to go to when they need to throw the football. And yeah. particularly, we know that Phoenix Sproles has been around for a while, and that he is a bit more that big, big play threat, and he can, you know, he can make those those longer completions. But Christian Watson, we know the guy with the NFL uh, pedigree, the guy that's going to get in the NFL attention, he can be that reliable go-to guy on third downs. Are you getting com- summoned by people near you or something? What the hell are you looking around for? I smell something in the house. Someone burning the house down? No, it smelled good. Can you not be fat for like 20 minutes? Hey, could you maybe just <laughs> let, let me? I, did, I didn't make any noises. I turned and I smelled. You okay, but you're on video and I could see you, and that was very distracting. We have different priorities. You gave me crap for getting distracted, being the toddler that gets distracted with the spoon. You're the one who just got distracted by the smell of food, and that's a lot worse. It's it's like the pie on the wind on the on the windowsill right now. It's it's coming. It's it's the the smoke fingers coming in my nose. You're like Winnie the Pooh. (laughs) God, are are you distractible or what though? I, I people uh, easily. Yes. I, I turned my head for a second and a because, half, and Joe you had did. to bring went... it up. And then you came back. That was what you did. You're a child. I, I cannot know. believe that you had to to, to derail the show because I I had a it, something that you know acknowledged my senses acknowledged. Speaking of a derailment, Suck. Sean, can you do the the bet online read? <laughs> Have we still not done that? No, I completely <laughs> forgot that. Do the read, and we'll talk weaknesses because I don't. Oh, I don't think weaknesses. There are weaknesses. I don't think there our are weaknesses. broadcasting abilities. That's the weaknesses. Um, our but... aptitude. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. Well, Joe looks on his phone. Joe, um, mm-hmm. while you're doing that, you could probably look at some of the NFL playoff picture that is being uh, shaped and cultivated as we are speaking. And with that comes the most exciting time to gamble of the year. It's the most exciting time because everybody's watching. You're sitting there. You got all your props. You're sitting. Oh, here's a little parlay. I got whipped up. I'm I'm going to kick some ass, man. I'm going to enjoy the game. And then, you know what? I bet on the first game. I got beat down. But you know what? There's another. Oh, here's the AFC wildcard game. Now I'm going to go in on that. It is the most fun because, I mean, it's a lot of fun betting NFL week to week. And then you got your parlays for the 1 o'clock games, 4 o'clock games. And you're, you're not even your parlays, but you just got a lot going on. When you can just lock right in and you can say, okay, he's going to do this on this play or he's going to score a touchdown this game for sure. You put that in there and you're just watching. You're locked in. You're engaged with the game. And you're not like Joe just sitting there on his phone the whole time thinking that he's you know, just sitting there like a like a mope. Yeah. So if you're trying to actually have some fun and not be a mope, head to bet online, use the promo code BELIEVE, and they will, you will receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit if you haven't made a deposit yet. If you haven't and you're going to plan on watching the NFL playoffs, use betonline.ag. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. So don't wait until March in that dead season to take advantage of all the amazing new offers available. Bet online where the game starts. I can't wait to see the March reads. I'm sure they'll be happy with me saying that now. I'm sure. Uh, you got March Madness, I guess. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What oh, and for anyone curious... Bet Online has Montana State, North Dakota State on there. Oh, here we go. So if you'd like to bet on that, currently has North Dakota State at minus seven and a half. Ooh, I might need to take that, Sean. Mm-hmm. That's a big number, dude. That's a big seven and a half. That's a big number I for might football. Need to, I know, but I might need to take that. What's the over or under set at? Uh, 42 and a half. Oh, okay. I, get I don't it. know if I'm I'm taking the I I I think I would take the under. Mm, 42 is... and a half? Okay, so they're going to be, be running like the ball a lot. That means the clock's winding a lot. Seven. That you are really with... thinking North Dakota State's going to beat the hell out of this team. I don't know about beat the hell out of, but I don't think it's going to be very high. Two scoring. scores. Oh, yeah, maybe like seventeen to ten or, or seventeen <sighs> to seven or something like that. Over under forty two is really yeah. interesting. Um, can we get some fan engagement on this one? Because nobody sent me their bets, but this is actually the. I'm gonna. I, I'll tweet it out. I think we. I would like. To I think we insight. should tweet it out and see yeah. what what the vibe of the people is because I want to ride with the. I want to. I, I don't want to fade. I don't want to start fading everybody and getting all. So, 
you know, let, let's see what the, the people are saying on this one. At Sanderson Radio on Twitter, at Jody Leone on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Send us what you think. Just take a look at betonline.ag. Look at that spread and, you know, give us a little what, what you're thinking. I got to see. I got to see what the people are thinking. So, Sean, I want to get your thoughts on this, though, before we get to the bottom line. Um, I don't know if I can really pinpoint a weakness for this team. The only thing I can mm-hmm. maybe highlight is an inability to throw the ball like at a dominant level. And we kind of saw that against South Dakota State where Cam Miller was asked to throw the ball in those third and long situations and he struggled. Yeah. But I don't I think that they've moved past that. I feel like that they've that was so almost feels so long ago that they've worked themselves out of situations where they even have to worry about that. Yeah, that's an effective way to slow down this team is asking Cam Miller to throw it on third and seven and asking him or forcing him into situations where he's overthinking things. But this is really not that weak of a football team. And look, I will say, though, Sean, the criticism I gave to, to Tommy Mellett, I'm justifiably going to give that same criticism to Cam Miller. OK, but Cam Miller has a better support system around him. In terms OK, of the amount of running backs that he can. Rely on. It's all too similar, man. These teams are too damn similar. They're, they're averaging uh, or Cam Miller's averaging one hundred nine point eight yards a game. And then the the team itself averaging uh, 152 uh, yards a game passing, giving up 177. So it's very reflective of, of Montana State and their their splits. It's just like it, it's too parallel. It's too it's going to be too good of a game. And then it's it just comes down to which defense. It might be turnovers. It might be turnovers in this game. It might be or who punts more. It, it's turnover. Yeah, three and outs, turnovers. Special teams could play a. Uh, mm. Was there a big special teams? There were. Special teams played a huge factor in the last championship game. Yeah. Yeah, if someone could break a kick return or a punt return touchdown back, or if someone muffs know, one also. Nah, none of these teams has a has a Jaquez Ezard, so I don't know if that's really in play. I I don't know. I'm a little bit perplexed, but like if I had to say who I would give a slight edge to. And it's literally it's so slight in ter- at, at the quarterback position. I don't know if it's slight. You've been talking real spicy. Uh, well, no, I'm saying at the quarterback position because you have two okay. young quarterbacks. I would give a slight edge to Cam Miller because he's played more games, and that's the only reason why. I think Mellett's a better runner. Cam Miller's a better passer, and he's played more games. And it's 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 like incremental. It's like by a hair that I would barely give that edge to. So how do you think North Dakota State is going to perform in this game? Because – I think that they're going to be like the Terminator, like they're just a machine. Mm-hmm. And it's very, very rarely that that machine gets off kilter. So it, it, they are just a, and it's football and I know there's emotion and all this, but they're a very mechanical team and how they operate and how they play and how they're very rarely out of position. If you look at their defense, you think, how are they just so good? They're always in position because they're always thinking they're always it's a smart team and they're always just it's like a machine. The way that I see this is North Dakota State is is going to have like some random running back that's going to pop off for a big game. It's we oh, can't even really seven. You can't. It's you just going to be yeah. one of those guys. Like I can't tell you who it's going to be. It's going to be a fullback or a running back. It's going to be somebody totally like just spin a wheel, pick a guy. It's going to be that guy that that steps up. I can't tell you who's who it's going to be. It they ride the hot hand, the hot hand as we always know. Um, they're not, and I still stand by this, I don't think this is going to be a high-scoring game. I would actually be shocked if this is a high-scoring game, and I don't think that's a hot take because these are two running teams with good defenses. Something crazy is going to have to happen for the, the lid to get taken off of this game and it be high-scoring. It is going to be low-scoring, and in a low-scoring game, to me, the, the team that has the more, the deeper running back core, the slightly better offensive line is going to have the edge here. And I think that North Dakota State's defense is stronger. And, and I know it's, it sounds weird to say this. It's stronger than Montana State's defense. Not by much, because Montana State, as we know, top five defense this year. But North Dakota State is the best defense this year. They are a very well-rounded group, yeah. as I've illustrated. They, they are not a team. 49 sacks on the year, giving up 17. These two, they're, they're two parallel, man. They're so, they're so parallel. But the thing is, if you look at those parallels... Montana State is slightly better in all of those parallels. They're similar, but they're just slightly better or a lot North, better in some of these categories. Do you mean North Dakota State slightly better? What did I say? You said Montana State. Mo- North Dakota State, sorry. It's slightly yeah, 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 that's what I was thinking. It, it's very slight, very slight, but it is yeah. true. Um, that well-rounded defense of having who want, all yeah. of those dudes that it's 
you can bring in so many different guys off the bench. They wrote, they have a lot of different guys that contribute. It's not just, it's not like Montana state where it's just Troy Anderson dominating. And I know that you've got a really good group around him, but everyone's so focused on Troy Anderson. This is a group where I can't pinpoint who the best player is because they're all so good and they play so freaking well together because they're so well coached. Okay. That's a good point, Joe. Um, You didn't incur my wrath on this episode today, which I think is good for me and good for you and good for everybody. Um, I hate having to, to to get you all worked up and to actually say what you mean, but I know that you're a North Dakota State homer, so you're you're definitely going to say what you mean about them. Screw you. I am not a North Dakota State homer. That's right. You're, you're anti you're, uh, North Dakota State. Says who? I don't know. You. I am not. Yes, I'm, the, I'm the most unbiased FCS broadcaster that has ever lived. It's lame. It's boring. No, because I call it how it is. If one of these teams goes out there and lays a big old duke on the field, and you think I won't, you think I won't call them out and say that. What, what, what's your take going to be for North Dakota State? They're going to come out. They're going to play gritty. It's going to be a, a hard fought battle. Is that is that what your down the middle take is going to be? If you weren't so hungover in South Dakota, I would I would have really beat the hell out of you. I would have just <laughs> tried to just really knock you around. But you were uh-huh. I felt bad because you were you had you know sipped a little bit too much, and I said you know what I'm not going to get physical with you. But if I do see you again, Joe. I'm not going to care about that. I'm not going to care. I did rally, so I don't care. You um, did not. What is your... Yes, I did. I, 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 I made it through the game. I was completely fine. And hey, way to pay attention. Also, I already said how I think they're going to play. Like a machine, okay. jerk. Okay. Any final thoughts before we wrap us up? I'm a machine, jerk. <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in, folks. Oh, come on. You'd know selling my Ray Lewis quote. <laughs> 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 did not you did not just do i didn't mean to do that <laughs> you did not just scream cough into the microphone i didn't mean to do that <laughs> i was gonna oh, say something my god i've been trying to hold back a cough for like 15 minutes uh um, you just <laughs> how's your sh- how's your uvula in? is it still in there <laughs> <laughs> you just knocked the tonsil loose. Look at your forehead. Look at the veins. What a freak. Oh, you are an alien. Oh, I cannot believe. Do I leave that in there? Yes. How could you not? Okay. Um <laughs> before I cough again. All right, here's a really note. salient point. <laughs> It goes in line with what I was talking about earlier. Where yes. Imagine if there was a, a cough enhancer why would you need instead it? of a cough why, button. Why would you need a cough enhancer? You just yeah. did it. All right, folks. Subscribe. Five-star review. At Joe DeLeon. At Sanderson Radio. Don't subscribe. Zero-star review. We will talk to you on Saturday. Flag the YouTube channel. Uh, okay. Don't take us down. Good night. <laughs> Drive safe.